Section 6.8, Electron Configurations. So, an electron configuration is where an electron is likely to be. So it's a probability place. Um, according to the, to the Pauli exclusion principle, every single uh, orbital can have no more than two electrons. So as soon as an orbital is full, the, any additional electrons has to go to a new orbital of higher energy. They can't all hang out in the cheap room. You can't have an apartment with, with uh, hundreds and hundreds of electrons in it. You have only two electrons in each orbital, and then the next orbital would have to be filled. The energy, though, is higher and higher and higher. So, so you will have a first energy level, which is your 1s. So your first electron is going to be an up spin in the first s. So that would be hydrogen. The next one would fill that subshell, and that's helium. So that's the first two. And now the row is full. Helium now has the same configuration or the same chemistry as all the noble gases, where their whole shell is full. Even though that was just one orbital full, it still behaves like all the other noble gases. There's very few helium compounds. If there are any more electrons than helium, say the next one is lithium, then you would have, here's a lithium um, compound here. The 1s is full, so this is your hydrogen element, or, uh, electron. Here's your helium. And so you see that these are, I kind of use a double arrow, or a full arrow. This is a half arrow. And then the next one has to be in the 2s. So remember, there's only one s in the first there's only one subshell in the first shell and that's an s so now this is the second shell that's why it's denoted with a two and the first subshell is always s so you're going to have your if you have one subshell it's s if you have two it's s and p if you have three it's s p and d if you have four it's s p d and f hun's rule says that for degenerate or orbitals, remember same rent, you will always give one girl a room by herself before you double them up. They're spinning in different directions and there's more, it's energetically more beneficial to have them all spinning in one direction than to have um, paired spin. So the one is full, so, so there is no other degenerate 1s so that means helium came in and, and filled the 1s. Then lithium and beryllium filled the 2s. And now P, there are three orbitals all with the same rent. So the first one will come in and, and be the be a upswing. Hun's rule said the second one will be in its own room. The third one will be in its own room. And then if you have any more, it starts filling the P subshell by giving a, another electron to the first room. So the so any more past this would be filling this one, and then the last one would be filling this one. So Hun's rule said you're going to get your own room if it's available, only doubling up after all the rooms have at least one uh, electron in it. So let's look at um, the first through sodium. Lithium has its first shell full. And this first shell is 1s, okay, so 1s1, 1s2, that's lithium. And then it has one more because it has three, uh, there's three total electrons. So it's by itself in the next shell in 2s. So this is an unpaired electron. When you have beryllium now, you're going to have lithium's electron plus beryllium. So it fills the 2s because there is no other degenerate s. There's just one subshell in an s. When you get to boron, you've got all of 1s full, you've got 2s full, and now it has to start going into the 2p's. 2p has the next highest energy, and so you're going to start giving each kid his room. Okay, so there's carbon gets her own room, nitrogen gets her own room. Once you get to neon, okay, now or after nitrogen, uh, when you have oxygen, 
you'll start doubling up okay and then there's the next one fluorine and there's the next one neon neon now has a full shell neon is very similar to helium because helium completely had the one shell full now neon has all of its shells full remember neon has s's and p's so here is 2s 2p it's filled so neon acts very much like helium Sodium now has to go, the next electron has to go into the next shell, which is 3. So it goes into 3s. The final thing is that there are uh, easier ways. You can see that these electron configurations are getting longer and longer and longer. These, this is shorter, longer, 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 longer. As you get down and down into the periodic table, this would be inches and inches and inches longer and longer and longer. So there is a shortcut way that um, everybody uses, and that is as soon as you get to a um, to the previous noble gas configuration. So let, let's look at sodium here. Here's sodium with 11. The, the previous row that's full was neon. Neon is, is the very last one. It's completely filled. 2S is filled. 2P is full. It's done. So rather than doing ne uh, sodium as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, a, che a cheat way or shortcut way is simply say neon or configuration of neon and then 3s1. So it's the, you go to the previous row, go all the way to the end, the, the last, the column, and that group, uh, the noble gas group, give the configuration of that noble gas group and then come and give its outer shell. This very last one is called the outer shell or valence shell electrons. And that way it's, it's short, it's not so terrible. So here's an example of manganese. You go to argon and argon's configuration is long by itself, but you simply know where argon is. You know that it's a noble gas and it's at the end of row three. And then you go to 4s2 uh, and then 3d5. So here's 4s2, there's two electrons, and then remember Hund's rule, everybody gets their own room, so that's 3d5. Zinc, which is at the end of the d's, would be argon plus 4s1, 4s2, and then 3d10. Remember you're going up first to 5, then start filling in 6, 7, 8, 9, 10.